Welcome, everybody, back to another exciting show of the About That Wallet podcast. My name is Anthony, and I'll be your host for today. Uh, Before I get started, I want to say thank you to those of you who have served in the military for the U.S. of A. Uh, Let's take a moment of silence for those who have served and have not returned home. All right. So again, for those of you who are new to the show, I want to say welcome. For those of you who have been listening to the show for quite some time, I want to say welcome back. Uh, Today's show, I really want to talk about the importance of 1% is all you need to change your life. Uh, Because if you think about it, 1% of 24 hours is only 15 minutes. And if you expand it a little further, 1% of a year is approximately 37 days, which is just a little over a month. Um, So the reason why, so you actually thinking to yourself, why am I talking about the 1%? The main reason why I wanna talk about the 1% is because it is the best approach that I've seen to achieving a dream or even a goal. Um, And it's a lot easier to focus on 1% than it is to think about the 100% growth. Because if you think about it coming from when you were one years old and some people even think about how they started walking, you know, every day you start walking or you try to stand first and then you go from a stand to maybe that one step. And because you take that one step, your parents get so excited. Next thing you know, you're taking two or three steps on your own. Then you start walking a little further. Then your parents start chasing you because you start running now. And now that you're running, you just can't stop running. But then the parents don't talk about those runs because you can always get hurt. You can run onto the street and so forth or slip and fall. And then you just kind of take those strides over and over again. and You get better and better and you start to play around with it to the point where you start hopping. And then you start skipping and then you can jump rope and play little tricks and stuff like that. Or even to uh, as extreme as a ballerina where they can actually spin on their tippy toes or the knuckles of the foot. Um, I'm not sure if you ever seen the knuckles of a foot of a ballerina, but they they're not too pleasant. However, I digress. But is to understand that it takes 1%, just a few moments out of your day to actually make a huge improvement when you look back at your life and what you've came through. Now, I work with a lot of incredible STEM workers. And for those of you who don't know what STEM is, STEM is the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And it's just shortened down to STEM. Um, And it's not always the talent that drives them to achieve the greatness and a dedication to where they are today. It is within that group of high achievers that I've came across, it's their consistency that sets them apart from the rest. And it's mainly their lifestyle. Most of the people that are in STEM that are this small group that actually does so well in their field, um, they study this stuff day in and day out. You cannot tell them anything different. And they always learn the latest and greatest things. And they actually are open to the concept of taking what they learn now to the next level. But as we all know, lifestyles do creep up. Uh, Things happen in our lives. And one of the things that I, I started to understand is that when it comes to finances, finances is very important. Uh, to everyone, mainly because it kind of sets the tone on where we live, how we live, what we purchase, who we hang out with, who do we don't hang out with, and where do we shop. But did you know that heart disease is the number one leading cause of death in Americans? Um, I actually just pulled this up from the CDC website that showed that the health disease Uh, so far, and this is counting for 2020 numbers, is 659,041 deaths. 
Um, and that is right above cancer, which sits around 599,601 uh, deaths. Um, I, I will put the whole list inside the show notes, but you can also find this out at cdc.gov as well. But the reason why I brought up the health aspect when it comes to uh, death and stress, because when you think about stress, how can I put this? Stress is very, it, it's, it kind of helps us survive, but it, also, it can also kill us if we don't, if we do not manage stress properly. Stress may lead to high blood pressure, which can pose a risk to heart attack and stroke. Stress also may contribute to such cardiovascular diseases, such as smoking, overeating, or lack of physical activity. Because if you ever notice somebody that's really stressed out, they're like, I gotta have a smoke, I gotta have a smoke, and they like shaking or whatever. And then some people just stress eat. I mean, I personally do stress eat, but I actually stress eat with uh, trail mix um, because it's just something to kind of keep me going and thinking at the same time. But also I try to, with trail mix, I try to make sure I get a little less of the M&Ms in there, uh, but the M&Ms do add such a great uh, kick to to the chewing because it just kind of keep you going and thinking and stuff like that. So that's what it does for me. Um, I do stress eat, um, but even though looking at me, I, it doesn't look like it, but I do stress eat, but I just try to pick different foods that will kind of help me maintain my health uh, without overdoing it. So I'll, like, I'll do like chips, plain chips, uh, because the ingredients are under five, uh, which is good. So, all right. But, um, and you also, you notice some people that lack the activity, uh, the stress levels are just too high and they just don't feel motivated to move. Uh, so these are the things that are important, but it all comes back to your health. So you think to yourself, well, what, what does it have to do with finances? So you know what causes stress in most people is money. I mean, just to break it down, the number one leading cause of divorce is money. Um, a lot of heartbreaks and issues that you have with your day-to-day -day life, it's because of money. Um, money is the aspect of everything. Even though a lot of people say money cannot buy you happiness, I beg to differ. <laughs> It makes life so much easier, honestly. So when I was researching about the stress and money, I actually came across a podcast called Speaking of Psychology on episode 22 uh, by the host of Audrey Hamilton. She actually starts off the show uh, pretty interesting. And she started off by saying money is the top cause of stress for many Americans. That's according to the latest stress in America survey conducted by the American Psycho Psychological Associations, or it's called APA. Stress can negatively affect health and even contribute to chronic health problems such as diabetes, heart disease. In this episode, we talked to we talk with psychologist and researcher Linda Gallo about the managing about managing stress and how it affects people with different economic and ethnic backgrounds. Now that episode is actually pretty interesting. I will possibly put a, a link inside the show notes to kind of discuss that a little further if you wanna hear more about the stress levels and finances. But this episode is talking about, for me personally, is talking about the 1% in growth. So I wanna stress, no pun, <laughs> The fact that in order to maintain your health and your wealth, you need to improve your finances 1% every day. So take 15 minutes to increase your knowledge about money, i.e. like reading a book or listening to a podcast, watching a YouTube video, listening to an audiobook, things of that nature, just to kind of keep, you know, your brain just soaking in that knowledge, okay, well, I might not be there yet, but this is something that I know that can come if I continue to take this path that I'm going down. And then I want you to start taking action on said knowledge. So track your spending, write on, uh, just write out your budget using a simple budget calendar. 
uh, that you can get from aboutthatwallet.com slash store that I created personally because this was something that I've used to kind of help me understand where I was financially and take me to that next level. So now I'm not living paycheck to paycheck. So if you want to just kind of get out of your rut and just kind of get things going, you need to understand where you're at first. So this is a great way to start um, tracking your expenses. Now I want you to think about taking time to write down your financial goals. Uh, the reason why I say write down your financial goals is because you need to know where you want to be. Um, if you don't know where you want to be, you'll take any direction and you just wind up anywhere that you are, which is currently where you are. Um, it might not be where you really want to be because you didn't outline where your goals are to be. Well, really where you want to be, honestly. Uh, so sign up. And also I'll say sign up for a free consultation with your bank. Yes, they do have financial advisors, even though they just like to take all your money, but they do have uh, financial advisors there to help you uh, with your money. But also you need to know what you want to do with your money before you go in there. Um, so they'll, if anything, they'll probably put you on a budget. They do have budget um, trackers as well as just a sheet of paper that you can write down and they'll have, they go into a lot more detail than my simple budget calendar, but my budget calendar actually allows you to visually see when your credit card payments are due so you can pay them on time so you do not fall behind and you don't have to pay those late payments. And keep in mind, yes, zero balance is a balance. So pay off your credit cards in full every month before the due date. Make sure we, you pay that off before the due date. It's very important. Uh, any credit, I will do a whole segment on credit cards later, but right now I just want to focus on the 1% of knowledge to kind of get you to that next level. Because when I start talking about credit cards, it's going to, this episode is going to line you up properly for that next level. All right. So you're a product of what you consume and it's not just what you eat. The main reason why I put this on here is because some of the things we don't think about, like as far as listening to um, the radio or we listening to the news or we reading the newspaper and not thinking that this is also have an effect on how we live our lives. So if this is something that you really wanna do in your life, which is to understand your finances, take time out to start consuming your finances as if you're eating, like you're, you're eating this up. Your body is soaking this in. Uh, the words that you're hearing right now from my voice to your body, the vibrations, this all has an impact uh, to your life. Uh, because one, you took the initiative to actually listen to this episode. And I wanna thank you again. If you want to get better with your health, then get into a room where it happens. The room where it happened. I'm not sure if any of you all are Hamilton fanatics. I'm not, but I did like that particular song from, from the play. Um, usually the kitchen. So if you think about it, you have a lot of stuff in your fridge and your cabinets. Just think to yourself, is this what I have? Uh, what is in these cabinets or in this refrigerator? align with my health goals. I mean, if it's cheap and unhealthy, I, I do give you permission to toss it out. I mean, your fridge should have more fruits and vegetables than it does packaged goods. I mean, get, I mean, the same way how you get right with your finances holistically is to also be right with your health as well. And your health will soon improve as you start to go down the path of understanding what your goal is in life and where you wanna be. So have you ever noticed that a lot of people who are in the financial space are also fit because they use something called the transferable skills. So some people are very good with their health. Like they work out, they wake up in the morning at four o'clock in the morning and they can go run for like five miles, come back, take a shower, get ready for work and that's how they start their day. But they also good with their finances as well, because they can take those transferable skills, which is, all right, I know that I can put myself on the schedule. They can also take that mindset and say, hey, 
I have money, I can pay my bills on the schedule. I know that this is my regimen to lift weights or to let's stick with the running. So I know that you first have to stretch, then you go run. And then after you're done running, you stretch again, check your watch for your stats to kind of say, all right, well, I did, you know, five miles in ballpark here, say about 60 minutes. You know, that's like one hour. And because they have those stats, they can actually take time out to think about, well, how can I take this into my finances? And the way how they can take that into their finances is, all right, well, this month I paid off, you know, all my bills uh, on Friday, or I paid my car insurance this month. Now, next month I have um, the housing and everything like that. I know this is probably a bad, bad analogy here, but if you think about it, they do, the skills are transferable because they've written down where they want their goals are. They've written down their financial goals and they also written down their health goals. And it's a lot easier once you know how to do one area in your life, you can easily transfer that to the next area of your life. So this is the importance of being 1% better. So I encourage you all to be 1% better today than you were yesterday. I think I'm up to about 15 minutes to sell right now. I'm not sure. This should be a little bit over maybe because um, I did like a lot of pausing here. <laughs> so <clears throat> you are already 1% better today. Yay. Ooh, ooh. So because you are 1% better today than you were yesterday because you took the 15 minutes to listen to this show, I want you to continue on to find these little 15 minutes or pocket areas that you can actually improve your lifestyle. So whether it be in your relationship, whether it be in your relationship with God or whichever religion that you're in, um, take those 15 minutes and actually give them a name. Don't just kind of willy nilly just do it. But I really want you to be conscious about the things that you're doing today. And as we go forward and you start to learn a little bit more about yourself, take those 15 minutes um, to really make a difference uh, for your life, your family tree, uh, because it's so many things out there to worry about. But I really want you to start focusing on yourself, your finances, your family, your home unit, because this is not an easy thing to go through. And 1% is, when you think about it mentally, it's not that much. 15 minutes is not that long at all. Um, and you spend 15 minutes just perusing through your social media. But um, I do want to leave you all with this because I do have a 15, like, since this is Memorial Day that I'm recording this and I'm releasing this pretty late, I do apologize, that there is a sale going on right now. If you go to aboutthatwallet.com forward slash courses, there is 75% off uh, for courses from, I think, 12 a.m. this morning on May 31st through 12 p.m. May 31st then it kind of, the percentages go down further and further uh, throughout the day. So you have ample amount of time to capital, capitalize on the savings and get started today. All right, everybody, please remember to like and subscribe to the show because it's free to you, but it's very important to me because it allows me to reach more people in the community. Thank you again for getting to know all about that wallet.